Hey guys and girls, it's day one of isolation. Not quite though, because I'm so sure just the same with that guy there. That's Mikhail. He is the new farm machine. But we had a major cock up, didn't we, Mikhail? Oh yeah. Explain the cock up, bro. Alright, so we've got a fridge door here, and we now have nothing in the fridge. And somehow we've had Bruno come in here and take four weeks of venison during the night. Yeah. And the only person who's been in here was me yesterday. And I don't remember opening the door, but. It's not like Bruno to do that, and that's what's happened. So I reckon I've locked in the door and not shut it properly, and or knocked it, and he's taken a month worth of meat. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we've got off to a bit of a, a uh, challenging start. That was the only real meat we had that wasn't that was really the good tucker. I gave you a little bit last night, eh? Yeah. A tiny wee bit. How'd you find it? Yeah, it was delicious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the last of it. It's gone. So Bruno. And, I, and the reason I know it was Bruno this morning is I found the bone, it was a whole leg, and there's only one dog on the farm that can crunch a whole femur. It was all crunched up. And what he'd done was he'd eaten what he could and then he'd buried it and then Poe dug it up. And she never had it. And it was like, oh shit. I, I looked at that and I thought, fuck, that looks like our venison, but it can't because it's in the fridge and I ran in here and the door was open. It's like, oh man, okay. Anyway. The new thing is that we're not allowed to go hunting and fishing, which is just like, <laughs> I'm going to ring the farmer and I'm going to say, uh, yeah, g'day, you stuck your sheep on my paddock uh, without negotiating a price or even asking me, I'm going to buy one. And this is going to be the price. It'd be the same thing, wouldn't it? Yeah. You could basically say 20 bucks because well, I wouldn't do that. But So I think we're going to butcher a sheep soon, pal, because we've got frozen pork. See, I gave all my meat away before this because I thought that we'd be going hunting all the time. Yeah. We've got a little bit there, but anyway, not the end of the world, just another challenge. That's how our day started. I hope you all started better. Okay. It's looking a wee bit tired. I planted those last night, and there was a tree growing there, as you know, and there it is now. And now we're taking it away. And the reason I did knock that over is because the rats could climb up there. It's also a plant on that side. So every dog has had a chew on that venison now that should have been ours. It's been having a chew, they've all had a chew on it. It's gone around everybody. Dogs think they've uh, died and gone to heaven. So are we raised Big Z? And as you can see, he's got some brown paint on his back because oh, he's painted the house. And who went under the house, eh? You did, mate. You sure did. Yes, you did. Hey, yes, you did. Beautiful boy. Look at the size of his paws. He's going to be a big dog, aren't you? Eh? You'll be a big dog. Yes, you are. Makes he come. Makes he sit. Good boy. Lots of praise when he gets it right. I've got this long piece of rope. I'm going to tie it around his neck, and I'm going to use a bowline knot or bowline. That means it won't tighten any more than it is. It's a good one for dogs because you can easily get it off and it, it, it's not like a slip knot. It goes so tight on itself but it doesn't go any tighter so it can't choke them. I want to make sure you get a bit of room for you there. So what the command is, it's going to be get him behind and the first thing, because he knows nothing about that command, I was going to use a stick but we'll just start off with a bit of rope and see how that goes. You don't know what's going on do you mate? You've never had a rope like this around your neck. Looks like fun to play with. Looks like a lot of fun. So just let him get used to that for a minute. We play around. He's had a chicken, he loves chickens. Actually, he loves chickens a bit too much. Okay, here's the command coming up now. First of all his name, then the command. Bigsy, get him behind. Get him behind. Good boy! Good boy! Lots of praise. He doesn't know what it's for. Good boy! Good boy! Good boy! Good boy! Good job! Why is he good boy? Okay. He did that really well, like he went with the rope, but he doesn't really know what's happened. 
This time, uh, I'm going to put them in front again and see if we can get them to go in behind again with the rope. Good boy. Okay, we'll start them in a sit position. Bixie, sit. Good boy. Bixie, get him behind. Get him behind. Get him behind. Good boy. Good boy. Good job. That's a good boy. Hey? That's a good job. So when he does it, he gets lots and lots of praise. And we keep on reassuring that. We'll carry on with that and we'll come back a bit later and see how he's doing. We're just having a little break from training. I want to know where that uh, chicken's come from and where it's going and where it's laying eggs. Bixie, sit. Bixie, get him behind. Good boy. Good boy. And there, we've taught him to get him behind and honestly, five to ten minutes tops. He's just like such an intelligent dog. I've trained a lot of dogs this command and I can tell you that this guy here is just... <laughs> what you got, mate? You bring me a present. Bit of bark. He's such a clever, easy dog to train. This is the reason I chose him out of all the other dogs. He quickly worked out how to get out of his pen. He quickly worked out lots of things. He's got, dare I say, he's got a sense of reasoning. Now, people say dogs can't reason. I beg to differ. I think he's a clever dog, aren't you, boy? And we're done with our training today. The thing is, with training, you want to keep the sessions sessions short and fun so the dog enjoys it. So next time you're doing some training, he knows he's going to get uh, lots of praise. You're a good boy, aren't you, eh? Man, he's a big dog. He's heavy. Look at the size of him. He's a big boy. <laughs> he's huge. Look at this guy. Oh, man. I just think, I, I can see, I can see like looking in the uh, camera here how big he is for his age. It's like, holy shit, man, look at you. Oh, you dropped your. Where's he gone? Hey, where's he gone? Where's he gone? Hey. Anyway, that was uh, Bigsy's training session. I'm stoked. Now, somewhere on the farm, there's some duck eggs. Because Ducky, the last four or five times feeding, she hasn't been around, so. We're going to try and find out where those eggs are because that's a real good food source, man. Protein. And I share my eggs with the dogs. Though now Mikhail's here, maybe might have to keep some for ourselves. But that's what we're going to look for some duck eggs now. Are you going to help me find the eggs, mate? Hey? Can you help me find them? Last time they were under here, and you can see all the down feathers. And we got those. So possibly somewhere where she can get under something. What do you reckon, mate? Nothing there, eh? Maybe down under this building because she has laid in the past under there. Can't see anything though. What do you reckon, Bigsy? Around here anywhere? Nothing there. That's suspicious. Down, down, down. Oh! <laughs> Oh, there you are. Jeez, I never thought of under here. Okay. Gotcha. And you're sitting on eggs that are not fertile, that we can eat, mate. Well, we'll just wait till next feeding time, eh? And we'll come and take those eggs off you. Hey, ducky. So, you've gone and laid another, another batch of eggs. Well, the story around here is, mate, you lay eggs, you pay the rent. You don't, chop, chop, yum, yum. So the government in New Zealand has said that we are prohibited to go hunting or to go fishing. This has been a real kick in the guts for all of you guys that hunt and fish. Particularly at a time when it was our time to shine and go out and actually not have to go to the supermarket. And a lot of us feel that we're a lot safer being in the bush and being in our boats at sea than we are in a supermarket sharing germs with other people and there's probably some logic to that too and some sense to that but the flip side is that all the services are tied up either on lockdown themselves and we could be putting them at risk or ourselves at even deeper risk or worse risk if we suddenly run to trouble which you can run to trouble and the other thing of course is that when you go hunting you don't just go in the bush you go out of your home, you get into your truck, you touch everything, you go to a petrol pump to fill your truck up. We know that the virus 
can stay on a petrol pump handle for days. Three days is what we've been told the virus can live on the handle of a petrol pump. And then of course, you know, you get back in your vehicle and then you go maybe to a farm somewhere, you open up another gate, you touch that. And then you get into a, either a public place or a private place, wherever you're going to, to do it, you're gonna come into contact with things. So apart from the fact that you could run into trouble out in the bush, you could actually be still spreading the virus. So it's part of the protocol to keeping us all safe. And I know it sucks, and the same applies to fishing too. The Coast Guard aren't there to rescue you if you get into trouble. The, the positive one is that the forestry now, which we'll be going into very shortly, normally, well, you pig hunters know as well as me that in the first sort of six weeks to eight weeks of hunting, you know what happens. What happens? Well, all those pigs that bred up during the, the summer, all the, had their babies, and they've dropped their babies on the deck now, they're little you know, squealers, some of them are, are this big, as big as your boot, and some are a bit bigger, but the dogs generally catch those and kill them first. And some of you might be saying, oh, my dogs don't do that. Yes, they do. You don't know what goes on down the deep gully. You might hear a distant squeal if you're lucky, but often it does go on, to the majority. I can say my dog, Poe, doesn't always do it, but she sometimes does too. So those piglets now, they all get a chance to get bigger and bigger. So by the time that lockdown's passed, they've had, depending on how long lockdown is, they've had either a four week or a six week, could even be a, a four or six month, we don't know how long we've locked down for, but they've had a period of time to grow and establish themselves and get in the wild. Same with deer stalking. Right now it's the raw, everyone's out there trying to, well, was out there, they've all come back in now. And for those of you that got out there before lockdown, well done. I see some good animals. Uh, Ricky Brown got a nice one. Well done, mate. Simon Fowler got a cracker. Quite a few of you did. I didn't. I was planning it next week. So, what's going on there? Well, of course, same thing again. You've got stags, like the really, the really good ones. The breeding stock that normally hunters would be targeting, or trophy hunters would, if you're a trophy hunter. They get to actually now do what they would normally do in nature and reproduce so next year's stocks you know once they've done their job then you can shoot them because they're they've already done their uh, fertilization to the the does the hinds are already in deer so great because that's the better stock producing better stock i never quite understood why we always target the best the best animals because that would be the breeding stock but anyway another another topic but point being is that now those animals get a wee chance so if you hunters that are stressing right now about that and and I understand how you feel, man, like more than anybody else is fizzing to go pig hunting. There is a silver lining to that dark cloud. That was today's uh, vlog. It's the first day of lockdown. And we'll get through it fine. And I hope you guys are getting through it fine too. Keep your social distancing. Practice your personal hygiene. Washing hands, surfaces all the time to give yourself the best chance to survive this. Be good, can't be good, be careful. See you later.